Hi there everyone. If you follow FPV closely, you'll be aware that DJI just announced their next generation digital FPV system, the DJI O3A unit. And it brings with it a lot of new features and capability that we've not had in FPV systems before. But it also brings with it some pretty significant hardware changes. The O3 camera in particular is a lot bigger and a lot more expensive than previous FPV cameras. So if you're thinking of trying out O3 for yourself, you're going to want an FPV frame that is designed to support and protect that camera whilst giving you the best possible field of view for your onboard recording. I've recently updated my AOS frames to be compatible with O3 and in this video I'm going to take you through the updates and the changes. I'm going to show you where you can buy these new AOS O3 frames. They're on sale by the way. And I'm also going to talk you through the compatibility to previous versions of AOS frames. It's a lot to cover, so let's not waste any more time. Let's head over to the bench and get right into it. Before I take you through each of these new AOS O3 frames on the bench, I want to take a moment to talk to you about the philosophy behind AOS frame design. Whenever I sit down to design a new frame, I always have three things in mind. The first is performance. Now, I think that these new AOS O3 frames are among the best looking frames out there. But as someone once told me, you can't see the frame in the footage, so flight performance is even more important. All AOS frames have this type of truss arm structure, which really optimizes the vibration and resonance performance of the frame. This shape is optimized using finite element simulation, and it means that the frame is incredibly stiff and that vibrations generated by the motors and the props don't propagate into the flight controller or the IMU in the O3A unit. This means that you can push your filter and pid tune further on an AOS frame than you would be able to on any other frame, and that's going to give you the best possible flight performance and the smoothest possible footage. The second thing I think about when designing a frame is compatibility. I think that whatever electronics you want to use in a build, it's really important that the frame is designed so that it fits all those electronics really, really well. The AOS 5 is a really good example of that. It's got three mounting points, front, center, and rear. And in each of those mounting points, we've got support for 20 by 20, 25 by 25, or 30 by 30 electronics. So whatever electronics you want to use in your stack or video transmitter, it's more than likely going to fit in this frame. And the new camera plate design for the O3 frames supports not just the DJI O3A unit, but also the original DJI camera, Walksnow Avatar, Cadex Nebula, and pretty much every micro-sized camera out there. So whatever electronics you want to use in your perfect build, it's likely as not going to fit into an AOS O3 frame. The third thing that I consider when designing a frame is simplicity. All AOS O3 frames are designed to be really, really simple to build. You simply have eight screws in the bottom of the frame, eight standoffs in the middle, and eight screws in the top of the frame. And this makes it really easy to build, really easy to maintain, whether you're an experienced FPV pilot or brand new to the hobby. Now we're going to go through each of these new AOS O3 frames in turn, and there are timestamps down in the video description, so feel free to skip to the frames that interest you the most. So now that you understand the philosophy behind the frames, let me take you through the specific changes that I've made to support the O3 system. And we'll start with the camera plates. This new camera plate design I am calling the, the infinity plate because of the way these cutouts in the camera plate create this, uh, this infinite symbol here. It took a lot of iterations to get to this design, but I think I finally found a, a geometry and a set of cutouts that not only looks really good, but also supports the vast majority of different cameras that people are using on FPV quads today. Mounted in this frame is the O3 camera. You can see how much bigger um, and wider and flatter it is at the front than most FPV cameras. You're going to mount that in the front sweep of this infinity symbol. And the camera plates are going to provide as much protection as possible without um, being visible in the onboard recording from the O3 unit, even when you have it set to its widest possible field of view. I received a lot of requests to add additional standoffs into the camera plate 
to create a sort of camera cage and provide additional rigidity and protection for FPV cameras. So you'll see that the new design for the O3 camera plate has positions for two standoffs, the top and at the bottom. And with the O3 camera, this will allow you to go from about 15 degrees of up tilt all the way to 45 degrees of up tilt. So you have a really nice wide range. And these standoffs are optional. So if you want to save the weight or you want more or less up tilt, you can always remove them and be confident that you're not affecting the, the structural performance of the design in a critical way. The plates are designed to be used without these standoffs in place and you can just add them in to provide additional durability if you want to. But if you're trying to run low or negative camera angles or very, very large camera angles, um, you just drop out either the bottom or the top standoff and you'll be able to, to get that camera angle that you want. The body of the AOS 3.503 has also been slightly extended and that's to provide really easy access to the SD card slot, the USB-C port and the bind button on the new O3A unit. So you're going to be able to get to those really, really easy. And also to give you access to USB ports on any electronics that you have in the frame, whether you have it mounted in the front, middle or rear position. The next frame I want to show you is the AOS 503. And this frame has the DJI camera fitted, so you can see how that fits into the camera plates. You're going to be using the rear two sweeps of the infinity symbol to mount the DJI camera. And again, you've got these reinforcing standoffs top and bottom. Because the original DJI camera is smaller than O3, you're able to get down to about five degrees up tilt with the bottom standoff in and up to more than 45 degrees of up tilt with the top standoff in place. And should you need any more or less than that, then just drop out the relevant standoff. Apart from that, the rest of the frame remains almost unchanged. Again, we have some small changes to the arm geometry just to thicken the arm up in a couple of areas and to, again, shorten these slots to provide a little bit more meat of carbon fiber um, to wear down if you're not running arm bumpers. The next frame I want to show you is the AOS UL503 and this is a toothpick 5 inch frame so it's designed for 5 inch bi-blade props and 2004-2104 motors. And this frame has the Cadex Nebula Pro mounted into it and this is a good camera to demonstrate how the frame works with most of the standard micro cameras that you can buy today. You're going to be using the middle S-shaped slot of the front camera plate and you have a lot of freedom to move it up and forwards or down and back so that you can get the camera perfectly positioned so that you don't have the camera plates in view but you get plenty of protection from those front two camera plates. And with a smaller camera like this uh, Nebula Pro, you're going to be able to get down to zero or even negative camera tilt and more than 45 degrees of up tilt with both standoffs in. And if you're running a camera like this, it's very unlikely that you would ever need to drop either of the standoffs out unless you're running really extreme camera tilt. Compared to the original UL5, again the body has been slightly lengthened so that you're going to have access to SD card slots and USB ports where you need them and access to USB ports on flight controllers whether you mount them in the front, the middle or the rear position. The next frame I want to show you is the AOS LR503 and this is a long range 5 inch frame. So it's designed for 5 inch bi-blade props, 2004 or 2104 size motors and it's designed to cruise for long periods of time uh, very efficiently. So it's a lightweight frame. It's designed to carry um, something like a lithium ion pack or a large LiPo to give you that flight time. And I think this type of platform is where the O3 system might really make sense. I mean the extra latency is not going to be too much of a problem for, for flying long range because you're not typically flying very fast in close proximity to objects, you're, you're more cruising. And not having to carry that extra weight of the GoPro is going to really extend the flight time um, and improve the flight performance of a, a quad like this as well. 
I've got the walk snail avatar camera mounted on this quad and this was the hardest camera to make work with the new infinity plate design because it has the same mounting pattern as the original DJI camera but the lens ends up significantly further back over a millimeter further back and also the avatar camera actually has a wider field of view even than the DJI camera. So you can of course use the rear two sweeps of the infinity symbol to mount this camera. Uh, that's going to work really well. You may, depending on your camera angle, see just a sliver of camera plate either side of the, uh, of the image if you mount it in the back there. But what I found works really well is to use the top screw hole of the avatar camera and mount that as far forward as you can on the rearmost sweep of the infinity and then that's going to give you um, no camera plate in view, nice amount of protection from any front impact and it's a really nice secure mounting as well. So that would be my recommendation for the avatar camera either like this as I've got it shown or use both screws um, in the rear sweeps of the Infinity, the same as the DJI camera. It's really up to you. This is the AOS 703. And this is a seven inch platform for freestyle or chasing fast targets, mountain surfing, all of that type of stuff. The main differences for the 03 edition of this frame is that it's been changed to be compatible with the camera plates from the AOS 5 and 5.503. They all use the same camera plate. And the shape of the top and main plates has been changed slightly to improve the aesthetic a little bit. This frame's party piece is that the arm structure is so stiff that you can run a really aggressive filter and pid tune on this quad. Something similar to what you would run on a five inch build and that gives you fantastic flight performance, a really responsive flight feel and also super smooth footage if you're looking to use this frame to capture cinematic type shots. This is the AOS Cine 3503 and it's a 3.5 inch Cinewhoop designed to fly with a GoPro in close proximity to people. Again the camera plates have been updated to support the O3 camera and this is actually the Calyx Polar which is one of the largest micro cameras that I'm aware of and even this fits really nicely into this shape. If you mount the camera at the backmost sweep of the infinity symbol then you still have a nice bit of camera plate in front of the lens to provide some protection and plenty of option for camera angle. You can go all the way down to zero or even negative and up to 45 degrees or even more. The key features of this frame are really easy GoPro mounting up front or in the back if you flip this top plate round. And we've added press nuts for the rear GoPro mount as well. So if you want to do chase shots, that now becomes even easier. If you fly single whoops a lot, you may be familiar with the concept of duct drag which is that a ducted quad flies more slowly and is more controllable at slow speeds than a quad with open props. With the Cine 3.5, we have these modular removable ducts. So you can really quickly, in just a few seconds, change the amount of drag on the Cine Whoop. And so you can change from chasing a really slow moving target, like maybe a skateboarder, to something a bit faster, like a BMX rider, just by removing or adding these 3D printed ducts. I like to print the ducts in two pieces so that I have the choice of a full height duct with both pieces in place, a half height duct with just one piece, or no duct at all so that I get the performance of an open prop quad but still with these really durable carbon fiber prop guards in place. And this is the final frame that I want to show you, the AOS Cine 2503. And this is a 2.5 inch Cinewhoop designed to carry a naked GoPro, fly in close proximity to people and stay under 250 grams. Again, the camera plates have been updated to support the O3A unit. And I think this is another platform where O3 really makes sense. You get very nearly the onboard recording quality of a naked GoPro without the weight and it fits beautifully into a small platform like this. Similar to the Cine 3.5, you have carbon fiber prop guards 
and the option to print your own modular ducts so that you can adjust the duct drag for different types of flying. Again, we've got GoPro mounting up front at the top and also in the rear for chase shots as well. I hope you enjoyed that whistle stop tour through the new AOS O3 frames. If you're looking to pick up an O3 frame today, they're currently available through CNC Drones, and I'll put a link down in the video description to that store. CNC Drones are based in Canada and they ship all over North America and internationally as well. They also have a Black Friday sale right now, so you can even pick up these frames with a bit of a discount. As with my previous designs, AOS O3 frames will also be manufactured in partnership with iFlight. Both as bind and flies and frame kits are made available to pilots and retailers worldwide. This usually takes a few weeks to set up, so make sure that you're subscribed and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any updates on that. Now we're at the end of the video, I'd like to take a moment to say a few thank yous to people without whom none of this would be possible. Thank you to Nick and Crystal at CNC Drones, Lynn at iFlight, Brian at Brain3D, my wonderful partner, Flora, my generous patrons and the great people on my Discord server, and everyone in the community who's built and flown an AOS frame and given me feedback in comments, messages and emails on how I can make the frames even better and new frame designs that I should look at. I really appreciate all of your support and I wouldn't be able to do any of this without you. Thank you, and happy flying.